Hey, what's up everybody? How's everyone doing out there today? Welcome back to Wildcat MTG and uh, today, today I celebrate a recent uh, successful trip around the sun and uh, I wanted to do something kind of fun today so we're going to do a double, double Masters opening. We're going to do a double Masters 2022 draft booster box and then I have a couple of double Masters uh, VIP edition packs that we're going to open up. Should be exciting, should be fun. I'm going to do these last. We're going to start out with the Draft Booster Box, which, you know, if you've been watching my channel for a little while, you you know is one of my more favorite products to open right now. Um, and uh, at the current price point of about $230 for a Draft Booster Box, uh, I still think is honestly kind of, given where the singles are at in the set, maybe one of the better values still out there. Um, you know, you have bad boxes, don't get me wrong, but I think the floor on these boxes is generally pretty high. Uh, I'm going to go on record as saying right now those... Uh, Double Masters VIP packs are a pretty high risk, but uh, high reward. Um, high probability of, of getting crushed on them, whereas I feel like these packs, uh, the Double Masters Draft Booster Box is going to be a little bit, you know, a, a much higher floor, better average return. But uh, man, we're going for it with those other packs. Okay, here we go. A little Borderless Spell Pierce. Yep. Croon Striker. Our first rare is the Ashenmore Liege. We do not want to see Lieges. Those are not what we're after. Myrels. Mael's Aria as our next rare. Uh, Inquisition of Kozilex. I'm going to do... That's pretty good. Lightning Helix. Recently reprinted in a standard. And then we've got our commons after that. No other borderless cards. Uh, Dockside is the card we are, we are chasing as far as the most value. I think Dockside, the regular version of Dockside now, is uh, over... Is right around $80. It's it's crazy. Uh, it is... Uh, oh, Imperial Seal is right there with it. Don't get me wrong. So we have a borderless foil. Is it boiler work? Which is kind of cool. Labyrinth Champion. Ooh, Mythic is a... Hey, nice! Dragon Lord Dramoka. I think uh, Dramoka is like $14, $15 as the regular version, so that is not a bad Mythic. That's kind of cool. I actually don't think I have any copies of this for myself, so I'm not upset about that. Unus Prowler as our next rare. Strike from Darkness, Unburial Brights, Terminate. Nice. Got ourselves a Borderless Coiling Oracle and the Iguanar after that. Let's see here. Uncommons and commons. Yeah, so Dockside's about 80. I think Imperial Seal is like still like 78. Uh, Mana Vault, Mana Drain running right neck and neck with each other around the $50, $60 range. So some really high-end Mythics. Uh, Rare-wise, you still have pack, uh, Force of Negation, excuse me, which is I think still about $40. I think Teferi's Protection is about $40, $42 as well. So some really good Mythics and some really good Rares. Not, you know, not necessarily Mythic or Bust by any stretch. All right, Imperial Archangel, which is a fun card, but not a big value card. Sidisi Blood, Brood Tyrant. Wall of Omens in the Borderless as an Uncommon. And that looks like it's going to do it there. Nothing else to speak of. I think Phyrexian Altar is another rare in Divining Top. I think Phyrexian Altar is now up to $30. Divining Top still around $22. Those are just as rares. Uh, Smothering Tithe is another big, big rare in this set. And that even still is like a $23 to $24 card. So a lot of really good rares. Uh, a lot of good Mythics. There, there, there's a lot of Swing and Miss Mythics. There are, as far as, you know, as for as many good Mythics as there are, there are a bunch of like dollar less Mythics, which really feels bad. But... Hey, nice. Oracle. So Oracle is about a 5 or $6 card as a rare. You know, pretty strong. Uh, isn't quite, you know, a little bit more power crept now, right? Doesn't quite carry the same value or the same pizzazz that it once did, but still a good value target. It's like 5 or 6 bucks as a rare. And then after that, Thraxamundar. You can run Thraxamundar in one deck. Okay. Uh, but as I was saying, oh, Shadowborn Apostle. Neat. Still a dollar two for Shadowborn Apostle. Um... But, you know, as I was saying, is is it's not necessarily Mythic or Bust. And the good news is, is that there are, even though there are some real swing and miss Mythics, there's plenty of value at the rare level in the set that even if you have, you know, kind of a, if you end up on the wrong side of the Mythic Assortment, you can still more than make it back up on the rare side. Here we go. All right, Agony Warp. Knightly Valor. Next rare. Oh, hey, speak of. Nice. So probably about five to six borderless rare mythics per box is what you're going to average in one of these draft boxes. Um, you're hoping, obviously, for the best on those. And this is uh, among them. Uh, I think a uh, borderless uh, non-foil Phyrexian altar is still in the range of about $30. So that is really, really good. Uh, we are not upset about that. 30, yeah, I think 30, $34. It's like it's been, it's been climbing. So that is a extra strong rare pull. Really nice borderless pull. Happy with that. And then Weathered Wayfarer, which is also probably a couple of dollars. I don't know if it quite hits that $3 mark. I'm going to put it up top there, but it might not. We'll put a, throw it off to the side there. At the very least, it's a nice playable rare. 
A borderless mole drifter, never upset about that. Chancery as an uncommon, and that's gonna do it there. Okay, hey, nice, really, really strong. Happy with that Phyrexian Altar, really, really happy with that. All right. What's crazy is I mentioned a bunch of really high-end cards and I haven't even mentioned, nor have I forgotten about the fact that you have Kozilek and Ulamog in this set and Cavern of Souls. Oh, nice. Foil uh, Inquisition of Kozilek. Nice. Foil Uncommon. Deep Analysis. Rare is Leonin Arbiter. Next rare is a Judith. That was downshifted in uh, Commander Masters. Good downshifted. Downshifted to Uncommon in that set. And that's going to do it for that pack. Okay. No real land cycle to speak of in uh, this Double Master set. They pretty much skipped out on the land cycle, which is fine. You do have like City of Brass, which is probably about 15 bucks. I think Forbidden Orchard is like eight, seven to eight. Um, and I think Pillar Perunes is the only other rare land in this set, and that's like a, a dollar or two. All right, Brindle Shoot. Sky Knight. Ooh, we have a mythic. It is a Hellkite Overlord. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, one of the Womp Womp mythics, this is, uh, hey, if this was like a battle, that'd be really good, but not so much as a regular mythic. I think this card's like just under a dollar. So, sure, that's fine. A Phyrexian Tyranny. As our next rare. There we go. Abzan Charm, Misfire Adept, and Gruel Turf as uncommons. And that will do it for that pack. All right, so last pack of the first column of the box. We do have one... Very, very nice. Rare with the uh, Borderless Phyrexian Altar. Dromoka as a solid mythic. Again, I think it's probably around 14, 15. And then Hellkite Overlord, not so much. Okay. Spider Spawning. Jeskai Elder. Rare is a Bloom Tender. Nice. This is another really strong rare. Really on its way up. Um, was hanging out around like post reprint, like $10, $11. And now up to the $16 range. It is a very strong card. Very good card. So, um, and really good value. 16 bucks or so. Nice. Oh, hey, there we go. Hello. I am always interested in acquiring another Cavern of Souls. Uh, very cool. Very excited about this. Actually, what's funny is as much of this as I've opened, I haven't actually opened up a ton of these. So Cavern of Souls, very strong mythic, probably right now on the $44, $45 mark, I think. Kind of on a, also on its way up despite a pseudo reprint. Uh, well, you know, I guess standard reprint. Yeah, it's LCI, so it was reprinted into a standard set and still kind of holding value and actually still on its way back up. Super strong pull. Happy with that. Goblin Banneret, Crackling Doom, Path to Exile. I think that was just always like a good, you know, dollar uncommon. Gets reprinted as often as they possibly can now, which is totally fine. All right, into the next column. That was an excellent ending between the Cavern of Souls and the Bloom Tender. Excellent ending to that first column. Okay, Myth Realized. Makeshift Mahler. Mythic is a seasoned pyromancer. Man, this card was such a banger at one point. Um, was also still holding really good value when it was seeing play in uh, Rakdos Scam. Doesn't really see play in the current version uh, or nor the current meta of Modern, unfortunately. So this is more like a $5 Mythic at this point. Uh, and I say that, you know, if you remember when original Modern Horizons came out, this card was was insane. And even post-reprint, once it started seeing play in Scam again, uh, it was really, really high-end. But again, at this point, not part of the meta. Probably around $5. It is a Mythic nonetheless. All right, the Hate Seed. Summer Bloom, Viashino, another Path to Exile. And hey, Borderless Unearth. Okay, not bad. Not bad. And I'm not, you know what, even with the Season Pyro, like being, you know, let's call it less than desirable, I'm not unhappy with that. There are there are far more worse mythics you can get in this set. <laughs> Hence our Hellkite Overlord. <laughs> okay, here we go. On to the egg. Cryptic Spires. Dreg Mangler. Capsur's Fia. Next rare. Oh, is a next our next borderless is a Mimeoplasm. I've opened up a ton of these, particularly actually in the borderless version. Not one of your stronger pulls uh, that you want to necessarily see from your borderless, but we already have a Phyrexian altar, so not super, super complaining. Alright. Dramocus Command. Lightning Bolt. Good uncommon, of course. Swift Spear. Swift Spear downgraded to common. People were so excited about that going into Popper. And uh, big shocker, was really strong in Popper and is now banned in Popper. <laughs> Classic Swift Spear. All right, here we go. Bounty of Luxa. Hyena Umbra. 
Rare Backdraft Hellkite. I uh, don't recall Hellkite being $3 plus. I don't think so. Next rare, Master Biomancer. Sure. Civic Saber, Cold Steel Heart, Carnar Carnarium. And that'll do it there. All right. What I would love to see, and I haven't pulled one of these in a while. Um, I used to pull a bunch of them. In fact, my ratio for pulling Teferi's Protections at one point was quite insane. But I haven't seen one in a minute. I would not be upset about pulling a Teferi's Protection, nor a uh, Force of Negation. I know that's shocking to everyone that I want to pull $40 cards, but here we are. Uh, Doran the Siege Tower. I love, I still have a place in my heart for Doran. Doran is not a valuable card, but as somebody who played a lot of the original Lorewind block... Uh, Doran will always have a special place in my heart, and this card was a banger when it came out. Venser, Shaper, Savant. Venser's always like a dollar. Just like permanently a dollar. Okay. Uh, we have ourselves a Borderless Thought Scour. And that's going to do it for that pack. Okay, we're probably approaching the halfway point. We have slowed down mightily. Uh, on average, you're expecting around six to eight Mythics per box. So I would expect that we're good for at least a couple more. See, I've, I've, it's been a minute since I've opened a Dockside. Can I summon one? Ooh, a Foil Shadowborn Apostle. Probably again, a couple bucks. Rare, a Privileged Position. Privileged Position is like a $3 card now. Uh, it is a good, strong card. Needed a reprint, got a reprint. Post-reprint sank to like a dollar, maybe a dollar and a half. Worked its way back up and is now currently $3. I do run it in my enchantment deck where it is quite, quite good. Wasatora. And that's going to do it for the Uncommons. And the commons after that. Okay. It is a draftable set. A set that actually, while it was not inexpensive to draft, it was pretty pricey to draft this set. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Good high power. Um, the mana base was very flexible, so you could easily jam three colors, sometimes splash for a fourth. A lot of fun, but it being draftable, gifts ungiven. Uh, it being draftable, there's also a lot of uh, there's a lot of bulk. Conqueror's Flail. I think Flail is like a $4 card. Uh, I think that's uh, about right, so we'll put that up top. Believe that does carry some value. Devoted Druid, Scab Clan Giant, Vampiric Rites, sure, 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 sure. And oh, Borderless Burning Tree Emissary. And that will do it for that pack. Two packs left in this middle column. Not crushing it, but certainly not getting crushed. All right, Chronicler of Heroes. Ingenious. Rare is a Micaeus, the Lunarch. Uh-huh. Next rare is a Thistledown Liege. Liege is typically not where the action is at as far as value is concerned. Good, fun, playable cards. I say that every time, but uh, not helping you out value-wise. All right, come on. You need to see some of those rares I was talking about. Fire Song and Sunspeaker as a foil rare. Uh, unfortunately, not a big value dri driver, but still a cool card. But yeah, yeah. All right. Carrier Thrall. Rare is a Glimpse the Unthinkable. And next rare after that is a Fiery Justice. Woof. Bad ending to that, that column. Fiery Justice. We don't want to see those. Okay. Last column of the box. And uh, again, we should have at least a couple of shots at, at Mythics. The rares is where we probably need to make some ground up at this point. We, we struck gold early with the borderless Phyrexian altar. We should be good for at least a couple more borderless uh, rare or mythics. Hopefully one of them being a, a nice mythic would be really cool. All right. Heading into the last column here. Foil. <laughs> okay. All right. Phyrexian altar foil. Nice. Pack foil Phyrexian altar. So we're going to double up on the, on the Phyrexian altars and of rares that you can double up on. That's a really good one. That is a good, strong foil rare. Probably in like the $30 to $32 range would be my guess. And uh, hey, that's a really good one. Really happy with that. Foil Phyrexian altar. Let's go. Double Phyrexian altars just carrying this box. Uh, Perforosis Emissary. Ooh, we have a mythic. It is a Lord of Extinction. That is unfortunately... Uh, Lord of Extinction is probably in the $3 range, uh, but as far as like your mythics, this is kind of what I'm talking about. We're like, uh, not, not super great. Eh, all right, Lord of Extinction, sure. All right, and then after that, Rune of the Hidden Realm into our Uncommons, and 
Nothing in the back there. Phyrexian Altar is doing a absolute ton of work in this box. Does bring us up to five mythics. Again, I think the average is closer to six to eight. So I'm hopefully we're live for at least one to two more. And we still, in fact, despite doubling up on the Phyrexian Altars, there's a lot of juice left over at the rare slot. Here we go. Augur Spree. Eel Umbra. Mythic. Hey, nice. There we go. There's one of the uh, borderless cards. And we've got a borderless mythic to boot. Uh, recently reprinted as Fallout, but uh, Fallout is going to be... Those those Crucibles are going to be a little bit tougher to come by. So a Crucible of Worlds for us is probably, as a borderless, probably running in like the $20 range would be my guess right about now. So uh, that is definitely not bad as far as a mythic hit is concerned. Uh, far from a swing and miss. We will absolutely take that. Double Mythic is a Cedrus. Ooh, ooh. So it was a Double Mythic pack, which those can happen in this, which is kind of cool. Unfortunately, uh, hit on the first one, swing and miss on Cedrus. Cedrus is, is like a dollar. <laughs> that does bring us to seven Mythics now. So we are now at or above the uh, the box average. All right, I'm still going to throw Cavern on top, although I personally really do like that Borderless Crucible. But at least in the Mythic column now, we have a solid $40, $20, and like $16 Mythic to go along. Uh, I can't complain about that, right? I already knew that there was going to be some Swing and Miss Mythics in this set, as I mentioned from the very get-go. And yeah, while we haven't hit any of the super upper tier stuff, um, I'm not like real disappointed with those. So, Travel Preparations. Last breath. Rare is a grave crawler. I think grave crawler is like uh, still around three or four dollars. So I'm gonna put that up top. And Obnixilis unshackled as the next rare. And uncommons. Cool. All right. So what do we hit? We've hit uh, borderless mythic. We've hit a borderless, really nice borderless rare, and then a so-so borderless rare. So we might have one to two more shots at a borderless rare mythic. It's not common to see multiple. Uh, borderless mythics in the same box, but also not not unheard of. Okay. Eternal Witness as a foil uncommon. Good old Ewit. Scat Plant Giant. Rare is A. There we go. Nice. There is a good one. So Divining Top, as I mentioned, is probably still in that like low 20s range, low mid 20s. I think this is probably, if I had to guess, like 22, 23. So that is a good quality myth uh, mythic. Uh, rare for us. Definitely one of the, the rares that you want to see. Really happy with that. After that, Kervik the Merciless. Which Kervik is... He's a mean card. High casting cost. High mana value, but but mean card. Spell Pierce as a Borderless. That's going to do it for those. All right, cool. All right. Looks like we have about, uh, counting the pack in my hand, four packs left. Altasaur. Balustrade Spy. Rare is a Arjun, the Shifting Flame. And rare after that is a Nim Death Mantle. I think Death Mantle is right around three bucks. So I will put that up top as one of those $3 plus cards. Bear's Companion, another E-Wit, Mentor of the Meek. Uh-huh. Cool. All right. Three packs left. And again, you know, we haven't hit Imperial Seal. We haven't hit Dockside Extortionist uh, or Mana Crypt or Mana Drain. So we, we haven't hit, or a Mana Crypt, Mana Vault. Uh, but we've gotten some really good solid, you know, mid-tier Mythics and a couple of the upper tier rares. So we're definitely not doing poorly. Ambuscade. Rare, there we go. That's what I was talking about. I really wanted to see something in that in that upper tier, like the top tier rare range. So this is tier one as far as the rare values are concerned. Force of Negation, still hovering around $40 right there with Teferi's Protection as the two most valuable rares in the set currently. Uh, I am quite happy to see the Force of Negation. Let's go. Very, very nice. Excellent pull there. Excellent, excellent pull there. All right, Dax Duplicate. That is going to go a long way. Ooh, and a uh, borderless Selesnya Sanctuary. A long way towards uh, making this box a, a pretty good box. Another Shadowborn Apostle. Again, dollar or so. Dollar two as a... I think it's close to two dollars, just as a regular common. Two packs left. And now we've gotten some really good rare pulls to go with our our solid pull of Mythics. Not top-tier Mythic pulls, but, pulls, but, uh, but at least solid. Okay. Dragon Arch as a foil uncommon. Yep. God's willing. Uh -huh. Mythic, Master of Cruelty. So we did get to eight Mythics, which is uh, top of the curve in terms of volume for Mythics. 
Um, Master of Cruelties, I think I want to say is like four to five dollars. I don't think, obviously, I don't think it's like one of the the top tier mythics, but I think in the range of four to five dollars, and that's okay. Right after that is Rafik of the Manny, Symbiote Aqueduct. Yep, yep, yep. Cool. Yep, and, and that's kind of, you know, what you're expecting, right? Is is there's a large mythic pool. It is a large set. Um, you're going to end up with some swing and miss mythics, but there was definitely enough to juice to go along with it. And as I said from the get-go, as we head into this last pack, rares can help carry a box in this set, which is, you know, it's good because you're, you're more likely to pull, obviously, rares than mythics, right? All right, here we go. Last pack. Pyromancer. Hero of the games. Rare is a Leviathan. And conclude with a Pillar of the Peruins. I was really hoping that would have been a uh, a uh, City of Brass. Because that would have been, you know, City of Brass, but 15 16 bucks. But as we conclude this, and before I head into the VIP Masters stuff here, not unhappy, right? Uh, I think this is going to end up being like an average box overall. Because, you know, again, without Dockside, without Mana Drain, Mana Vault, without either of the, the, the Eldrazi Titans, the Spaghetti Monsters, it's a little bit tougher. But... Double Phyrexian uh, Altar, including a Borderless and a Foil, Pack Foil, a Force of Negation. Those help immensely. Divining Top and Blue Tenders. And then a bunch of three, six, three to five, six dollar rares. Not bad. We didn't hit like a Green Sun Zenith or some of those other upper tier, uh, mid tier, you know, rares. But not bad overall. All right. Allow me to, I'm going to move some of this stuff to the side here. We'll clear this stuff out because I'm going to make way for, I'm just going to move them over. How about that? Just gonna squeeze those out, make way for oh, for the VIP masters. And there's a, a little sigh there because, uh, as I mentioned, these are these are high risk. There is a a I'm doing it for the experience, not because I'm expecting to necessarily hit gold. Yes, there is some shot at it, but uh, you know these are these are tough. These are tough. If you're wondering what these run for, the single packs. For these run about 135 a piece right now. Okay. There are some really good things in here, and uh, there are some. Uh, <laughs> there's some oof. So you cannot get double mythics as far as the borderless rares or mythics. You can get only rare mythics. So, um, and then you'll get at least two. Pack foil rares or mythics from the base set as well. I'll fly past the commons here. While it's double masters and there are some really good commons and uncommons, like Manamorphos for that matter, it's not really why we're here, right? Oh, although a hey, foil lightning griefs. Well, okay. Not upset about that as an uncommon. All right. Can't remember exactly how many are there are. Uh Pendant Prism. Alright, first rare is a rare and it is a twilight mire nice you know filter lands are not a bad way to go that's pretty sweet not not uh not upset about that can we get that's no, rare and it is oh hey okay not bad uh foil hammer is on that's pretty good i think the base copy is probably like 10 12 uh might be a slight foil multiplier on there although the vip masters does does knock that down a bit but that is still a solid rare but now here's the main show here is we've got a borderless um foil rare and hopefully it's a good one. It is a brainstorm. That is that is not as good. That's that's one of the lesser ones. Yeah, that's gonna happen. Okay. All right. Now possibly a mythic, but uh, possibly a rare back here as a second. It is a rare, and it is Academy Ruins. Okay. Hey, Academy Ruins isn't bad. That's uh you know it, it's it's a tough. <laughs> as I mentioned, these are gonna be tough packs. But at least a borderless foil Academy Ruins is pretty solid as far as rares concerned. The brainstorm kind of hurts. Uh, I knew that was possible. Um, there, there are some, uh, some challenging things again, as I mentioned, high risk, high reward. Okay. We head into pack number two, but the Academy runes is really cool. Brainstorm is obviously a neat card. It is a good card. Uh, but, uh, it's, it's definitely not what you're pushing for there. Okay. It would be really swell if we could get a mythic out of the double pack foil slot. It is tough to do, but if we can secure a good mythic out of that, that at least takes some of the pressure off of the uh, borderless slot. Man, I can't seem to get this open. Come on. There we go. It's like, I want to open it, but I also want to be extremely gentle with it for obvious reasons. Okay. 
So we got ourselves a Teamer Battle Rage. Yep, yep, yep. Again, not uh, not gonna focus too much on the commons and uncommons here. Although the Foil Lightning Greaves was kind of neat as a Foil Uncommon in the first half. Bobble, man, at one point this would have been, uh, that would have been a certifiable hit as a Foil Bobble, but uh, Brothers War brought a lot of copies. Manamorphos, nice. Uh, brought a lot of copies of Mishra's Bobble into uh, into the fold here. All right, Skull, Mulcher. Top of the statue. Oh, Naginata. All right, first rare is a Voice of Resurgence. Eh, okay, that's it's cool. It's not not stellar, but it's cool. Can we get a Mythic? We can. It is a. Oh, hey, all right. That's what I'm talking about. That is super super sweet. Nice. So doubling season obviously saw a reprint, and that's gonna be a thing. But a standard copy, like a pack foil Mythic of doubling season, is still a really really good hit. Probably in the range of 40 to 45 at this point, but that is that is a certifiable hit. That helps a whole lot. Beautiful doubling season. Not unhappy with that. That is that's huge. Okay, all right, very good. Uh, now we got a uh, borderless foil rare. It is a oh no, it's a goblin guide. Uh, I say oh no because these packs are infamous for having like a goblin guide expedition map combo. Um, Expedition map actually funny enough being the much better hit, but you would rather see a mythic and a good one in this back slot. All right, here we go. It is a oh, it is a mythic, and it is a it's a worm coil engine. What's weird is I have not opened up a ton of these packs of the the VIP packs, but I have opened up another worm coil at one point. So I actually have double worm coil engine. Uh, worm coil is probably like twenty five dollars. You know, it's not uh, it's not bringing home the bacon, but it is it is a mythic. It is a borderless mythic. That is cool. That is quite, and by the way, I mean, actually, again, oddly enough, the expedition map is definitely more valuable than the actual goblin guide. Beautiful, these unlands. They replicated them. There you go. So, uh, overall, I think my Double Masters 2022 box was, was really, really solid. And just for the VIP Masters experience, very, very happy with the doubling season. I think the Academy Ruins and the Worm Coil are very cool. You know, I, I didn't expect this to be a money-making adventure, so to speak. Uh, I, I knew what it was as far as risk-reward was concerned. We didn't hit like a Force of Will or a Mana Crypt, so that's a thing. But I enjoyed it, and I had fun with it. And um, that's going to do it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button for me. Hit the like button for me. And by all means, drop me some comments. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much, everybody, and be well.